another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK, his name is Bricky, and we have a special guest, Kirioth! And apparently he's not here for the reason I think he's here, but we'll get in that in just a minute. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode of Adeptus Ridiculous and you want to support us, consider going to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, uh, $15 tier gets you access to all the HD posters you can shake a stick at, so patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, and speaking of posters, Bricky, my friend, are you ready for the brand new poster? This is definitely going to be a cursed one because the other one was so good. Mm, I can't wait. I can't well, wait. He can't I wait mean, for it. Shy, let him have it. Let, him, let, let, let me have it. Feast your eyes on this. Oh, my God. On oh, Zote Jesus. Girl? Zote Girl, indeed. Zote Ab Base Girl. That, I would have never guessed this in a million years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. with you. That's genuinely surprised me. Of all I, the things that I thought you could do that was not uh, that was not at the top of the list yeah zotes zotes i have to tell you i was kind of hoping for cursed bulbous red stomach thing full of blood or whatever but you know i'm i'm okay with being on brand just ridiculously toned ripped abs as well Uh, it's a sacrifice i am more than willing to make Oh, 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 yes, a sacrifice, of course. Mm-hmm. How, how, kind of, how we should truly, so honestly, noble. all pray. Yeah, exactly. All the nobility from this man is, is yeah. palpable. Yeah, you're welcome, everyone. <laughs> um, you know, die. I, I, I do what must be done, uh, as the Tao say, for the greater good. Mm hmm, mm hmm. That's not a Tao, though, that's a Zote. Yeah, whatever. Tomato also, which, greater good is not Tao, that's hot fuzz. So, ah, xenology. That's mm-hmm. the name, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Xenology. Xenology. Specific, <laughs> extremely specific Xenology there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, don't like those, you, those I don't like you people. are just. I don't want to. I don't want to be. <laughs> you don't like that? the official I just, I, 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 just, I just, you know, I mean, Kirioth is pretty cool, but I don't, I don't much like the rest of you people. You know, you're a. Uh, <laughs> you 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 smell bad. You 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 whoa, post whoa, this type whoa, of shit. Whoa, okay, look. Okay, I may not be a you, DK. I you're fine. Not smell. I, I forget. Smell amazing. I buy premium cologne. You cannot use that against me. I'm gonna. I'll go put the poster up so you guys can print it on soon. Or, yeah. So people can buy it. Hey, speaking of merch store, go check it out at orchidate.com. You can buy this goddamn poster. Mm, I would study those abs. He would study them. You could mm. buy this poster now. Check it out. It's cool, I guess. It makes me money, what? so, you know, it's cool to me. Oh, come on. You <laughs> love it. It was so lackluster until the end of the sentence, at which point the enthusiasm really came through. It, it really you peaked, didn't it, right at the end there? It. DK has drained the rest of my of my soul. There's not there's not much I've got left. I was wondering how much it would take to get the rest of your soul. I'm I'm glad we found out that uh Zote abs is all it took. <laughs> would you, okay. would you like um, me to rescue you? Would you yes, like me to carry <laughs> off carry off? You're here for an episode because I'm tired and needed a break. Um that's, oh, that's fair. fair. That is fair and valid, yeah. And uh, and until I until I finally get my executive assistant in which I will have more time and effort to do all kinds of things. But until then, I am dying. And so with that being said, (laughs) what are you here to talk uh, to us about? I need this job, dude. Please don't die. (laughs) (laughs) You can't just replace me. That's where the enthusiasm and honesty came in. That was the bit. That was the one right there. What Mm -hmm. what DK just said, that's the (laughs) like truest (laughs) thing said so far or recording. Okay. This one is a little bit. It's a little bit different because it's not vehicles. Cue what? the chat for the premiere going wild because why else would I even show up? Yeah. Um, well, they also titans, they, the dreadnoughts. What, that what? What else are you here for? They can. They well, can. They can read the title of this of the video though. Oh, well, yeah, I, no, no, I don't can't spoil though. The, don't spoil the suspense. Don't do that. Oh, okay, my apologies. <laughs> You're not allowed to read the title until after the video is finished. I don't know mm. how that's physically possible, but it's true. This one is a little bit tricky because there is not, there's no real condensed kind of intro to give to this. So once again, I've written something which, to be fair, once you know the full 
background of this, this will make complete sense. But primarily, I really want to hear what DK thinks this is. So, okay. once the box has been opened, it cannot be closed again. Only when all hope is lost can this secret be revealed, a secret so great that it could bring about the destruction of the Imperium, or perhaps act as its salvation. Oh, so this is like a this is like a forty k Pandora's box. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And oh no, I feel like I've heard about this at some point. And you have not. I haven't. No. Oh wow! Immediate, immediately uh, in there. I don't I really, I don't really want guess, him th- this to have like- any faith. This feels like it's going to be like one of those doomsday devices that they're keeping, like, what is it, under the golden throne or whatever, and it's, like, guarded by, like, uh, specific custodians or whatever. It, it feels oh. like it's something under there. You know what? I, I I, kind of, I feel like we've kind of got to, we've, I think we might have to give it to you. That is very close. It's that not is, bad. It's, it's not it's, bad. It, that's what it sounds like, because something like that, they're not just going to let it hang around it's got to be a doomsday thing under there right i don't know which specific one because there's all sorts of unknown terrors and horrors under there that i don't know about but you know (laughs) wow the shade it's not bad for dk's level says shy (laughs) no no you don't understand that is about as much of a compliment as i'm gonna get from her so I am. That, I am that's, very that's, proud. That is glowing praise from Shy. You know by what? The way. I'm also proud. Both of your both of your dads are very proud. Well Aww. Done. <laughs> um, you know what? You're really not that far off because this episode is about the Terminus Decree, which sounds awesome. By the yeah, way, I, I would have never gotten that one. There is, it- however, a catch because I'm going to need some serious theories out of you because the Terminus Decree is one of, I would suggest, one of the most important pieces of, like, I guess just background of lore for 40k. It's also one that has almost no information about it at all. This is definitely one of those things that they wrote in a codex one day and thought it was really cool and never elaborated on it, because they know if they did elaborate on it, it would kind of break the whole mystique. Yes, it, they knew full well that I, I reckon the author wrote it, and then everyone went, "Oh boy, what? Okay, we published that, did we? What are we going to do about that then?" And the answer was, "Never address it for as long as we live." So <laughs> this is something that huh. showed up in two codexes: Codex Grey Knights for fifth edition and Codex Grey Knights seventh edition. And the Terminus Decree is literally a set of instructions contained on a piece of parchment sealed in a box and it's guarded by the grey knights except except the grey knights as a whole don't necessarily know about it it is like absolute top level secret from everyone but the supreme grand masters of the grey knights chapter and which is our stupid asshole guy in the warp. <laughs> yes, oh, which is like Caldor no. Drago. <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's, oh, it's Caldor Drago again? It's always him. I hate you know that, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's funny now because we saw the memes and now we like him because he's funny. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's true. Okay. He's been no, redeemed. I still hate that guy. <laughs> so it? It's, it is seriously the, the level to which they've played this up for how little information that they've given is is incredible. The Terminus Decree contains the final secret of the gain of the of the Grey Knights. The Gay Knights? That's not correct. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Oh, wait, oh, oh wait, guys, it's it's July. Sorry. Nope. Oh, oh that's right. Too Sorry. late. Yep. It's too late. Our logo, to, our logo has to immediately go back to black and gray. Damn. Yep. <laughs> Damn. All right, crap. Continue. We tried. Um and essentially it is it's a secret document that is so kind of so influential so impactful that it that it could literally destroy the imperium or save it one or the other so okay if, if we reach a point where times are so dark and humanity is so threatened that a grand master of the gray knights actually has to open a just a wooden box with a piece of parchment in it what is contained in that box could completely annihilate the Imperium as humanity knows it, 
or it could save it from, you know, complete destruction. That's how big the Terminus Decree is. It is universe-altering for 40k. Uh. And that is literally all of the information we have. Wait. Episode's over, everyone. Go home. Wait, Let's wait. go. I'm it's... out the door. <laughs> so the literally only information we have is there is a wooden box. It's got parchment paper in it. It's only known about by very select few Grey Knights. And maybe it destroys everything, or maybe it saves everything. And that's it? Yeah, that's pretty much. All? Yep, nailed it. You, you remember when we talked about what? the Vash Store episode and how he <laughs> utilized the um, the Cholka engine, which is basically like a wacky time machine thing that Azrael used? Yeah. And we were like, why have we never talked about this before? It's, it's like, because you can't do that in 40K because it ruins the world. And so... He, that's why it's like, oh, we, he used it again to do weird crap and bring back Caliban. Awesome. We're never going to talk about it again because if we did, it would be a problem. <laughs> I, yeah. It, it's, it's literally world-breaking, which so, is incredible. Uh, I, so why did they bother bringing this thing up at all if like they don't know what they're going to do with it? They don't know why it's there. We don't know why it's there. Why even bother? No, I love I love I love his innocence, Kiriath. It's so, I, it's I so adorable. It's, it's great. This first showed up in the fifth edition of Codex Grey Knights. To give a little bit of context around that, I believe you'll have to you'll have to kind of uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Bricky. But I'm pretty sure fifth edition Grey Knights was the one where they went full Mary Sue. And, uh, uh, I th- I think fifth edition Grey Knights is also the. Uh, Sisters of Battle, we do not talk about moment. Yes, yeah. I, I thought I thought it was that one. I was pretty <laughs> I was pretty sure. In fact, actually, clicking through. Yeah. Um mm. there was there was a thing. Does DK know about that incident yet? Surely I he, I think I've tried told, to protect him from it because I think I've told it. them about it, but if you want to give him a refresher to see if it if it yeah, uh, sparks yeah. any re- memory. Re- refresh my memory, if you will. So as we know, Sisters of Battle, essentially incorruptible. Daughters of the Emperor, they are completely pure of heart, oh, mind, and soul. Is this Incredible the one time warriors. a sister got corrupted or something? Oh, no, it's way worse than that. Yeah, it's oh, so much worse really? than that. Really? Worse it's than a sister than getting that. corrupted? Oh, yeah. No, this was absolute insanity. A detachment of Grey Knights finds some Sisters of Battle. They are under siege from demons, if I remember correctly. And, of course, the correct thing to do would be to ally with them, beat back the forces of chaos. What you Uh-oh. wouldn't do, as a Grey Knight, is participate in the slaughter of the Sisters of Battle and then cover your armour in their blood as a ward against demonic forces. I mean... Except that's what they did. I'm. I, I will be a hundred percent with oh, you. What, a, I, after oh after the God, Grey Knights. I, wow, that is a picture and a half. Jeez. That's a good one. <laughs> that is dark. But I, honestly, after the Grey Knights episode, I'm like, you know what? I can kind of believe it because, like, the Grey Knights don't leave any witnesses, right? If they see like a demon incursion, they're just like, yeah, you know what? There might be some guard in there, but eh, we're just gonna kill everything. Doesn't matter. Screw oh, it. Oh, okay. Okay, so so if you're referring to, like, you believe the Grey Knights would do this, sure. The fact yeah, that yeah. this was done is, like, the weirdest thing ever, and it, it's incredibly f- strange and gross. Yeah, true, it, it was true. very, it was very, like, out of left field, just, like, random kind of, oh, this was, this wasn't even a friendly fire incident. This was the willful slaughter of loyal allies that were... By all accounts, not corruptible in the first place. And let's, let's, there also, is no... enough, let's also not forget the uh, the the maiming of their corpses and, yes. and using yeah. of their blood on their armor. Yeah, it's... It, wild, absolutely yeah. wild. Especially when you consider that one of the key components of the Grey Knights is their absolute efficiency and training when it comes to dealing with demons. So this is a chapter where. Killing demons isn't just, like, the norm. It's not just what they do. It's the basis of their entire existence as a chapter, I think it's fair to say. They all have psychic powers. They all have weapons that are distinctly anti-demon. And for some reason, 
instead of using the system of battle to assist them in the fight, because, you know, Grey Knights are by their very nature pretty much incorruptible, Mm -hmm. instead they killed them all and put their blood all over their armour. Like, it's so unnecessary, even by 40k standards, that the overall reaction was, I'm sorry, what now? You did what? Was Why? there a reason for it, or was it just like they just wrote it and were like <laughs> kooky gray knights and no real reason? Because like my the, first they're... my first instinct was like, oh, I guess they were like, oh, everything's demons, so I guess we should kill everything here because everything is compromised. But it sounds like a lot worse than that, actually. Because they, well, the, you know, the gray knights aren't. And- yeah, they're, they're not stupid. Like the Grey Knights yeah, know that the sis- sisters are are nearly incorruptible, not as much as they are, but darn close. Yeah. Um. It's just, I don't know. It reminds me of like really old gatekeepy forty k, where a lot of dudes would just like, I don't know. It feels like weirdly like um, sadistically sexual. And sexist, yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah, it, it, it feels it's kind of, that way. Oh, I it's don't kind of like unnecessary. that. Unnecessary. Oh, I, mm. yeah. I it, it feels it very unnecessary. To. Not a fan it, of that. It's, then it's just an unnecessary thing. The Grey Knights do not need to cover their armor in Sisters of Battle blood to be effective against demons. They yeah, are they're already, covered in sacred seals. They are already the most yeah. effective anti-demon force that the Imperium has. So on that level, it makes no sense. In terms of like strategy, in terms of like uh, numbers prevailing against an overwhelming foe, it doesn't make any sense. It basically was, here come the super warrior men, here's some normal women in armour, the best use for them is if we murder them all and paint ourselves in them. And that is not a good vibe. Oh, no, like, that's that is, just not, that that's not great. Vibe. That is it's a, not great. No, I do not vibe with that at all. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's very weird. It's, it's gross. This is also back when sisters were, were a bit more sexualized as a, as a, uh, an army and, and a yeah. lot less like their current iteration oh. where they are horrifyingly cool. Um, right. so this, this is, was, there's a lot of that. It was so it's kind of a cringe where, like, fest is what you're saying. It was just a it, pretty yeah, cringe pretty fest. cringe. Ew. It was at the time where like the Repentia for the Sisters of Battle, instead of being, I'm these, sorry, like, that, I, 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 ax- <laughs> I genuinely slipped. I'm so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, it kind of fits. It does actually. It, it, it enhanced the mood. It was kind of back at the time where if you looked at like the Repentia for the Sisters of Battle, what you, what you had for your line troops were, women in power armor and then the repentia who have no armor were all very slim very lithe uh, women in gotcha. in kind in of nothing. drapes that like kind of didn't really cover what well, they yeah. covered the like the essential um, parts if you like but like there's a lot of leg a lot of shoulder yeah. in fact there's there you it, go it left oh, very Jesus. little to the imagination yeah what a fucking difference these two photos are what a yeah. goddamn <laughs> difference <laughs> little bit just just, the just new a ones. tiny bit different yeah. the new ones are vastly superior and in I'm like every way people, yeah i'm fed up of people going oh but they don't look attractive anymore yeah, shut up Stop it. What are you talking about? <laughs> They're not supposed to look attractive. They it's are supposed 40K. to look like warriors yeah. who train every day of their lives and spend their entire time fighting. They're not going to look like supermodels. They're going to be scarred, muscular badasses wielding massive chainswords. What are you talking not, about? Not to oh mention the variety of torture devices that they, they oh. use for self-penance uh, is uh, yeah. mm-hmm. part yeah, of that's that, that too. That's the point of being a repenter, right, is the, is the penitence. Like, you have to, you, you know, you, you're trying to work your way back into the good graces of the Imperium, right? Or mm, good graces God, I, I, love, I love when I steer it's a conversation so towards Sisters of Battle. I'm, just, I'm so good at it. It's I, 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 I love when we steer a perfectly good Grey Knights uh, conversation to something that I Turns care about. <laughs> Yeah, but sisters are amazing, so it's fair. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, Terminus Decree, sorry. But didn't we already cover uh, it? There's there's nothing to it? It's just, hey, look well, at this world, potentially world-ending or world-saving document. It's stored away. Only Kaldor Drago knows about it because he's a loser. Um, what else is there to talk about with the Terminus Decree? Like, well, It showed up in like thing, two right? codices, and like, yeah. how, how are we going to episode this? But we now also have the benefit of things like the Horus Heresy. 
like the, that series of novels and then the uh the, the Siege of Terror series as well which kind of like it kind of expands it a bit but before we get to that stuff I really I genuinely want to know if you had to take a wild stab in the dark just a random guess as to what the Terminus decree could be given that it's in a wooden box on a piece of parchment it's protected by the Grey Knights the Grey Knights as a whole don't know about it. It's only the leadership who know. What do you reckon could be on that bit of parchment that is so big, like so extreme, that it could either destroy or save the Imperium? Uh, I, I honestly, I, like, I don't know what could possibly be on that. Like, some, it'd have to be something like related to like, um, I don't know. It's like, well, Biggie is still alive or something, or you know some way to like fully rejuvenate biggie is on that piece of paper or something like it has to be something massive and i, I don't I, I don't know that's the thing that i i find amazing about the fact that it was written in the first place where it's like <laughs> here's this potentially universe altering document like that's the only way to put it is literally just a document that's in a box that is on yeah. titan and it's like, but what What would you even write down? It's not even like a data stack thing, like an AdMech device. It's literally a piece, piece of, of parchment that has to have some sort of secret on it. Something that is like massively damaging, but also potentially could save the Imperium from like a full-on chaos invasion that has landed on Terror. It's just yeah. such a massive scope. That yeah, I always, is there uh, any chance that it's like the little piece of parchment has like a... Because cause Big E initially made like a, a deal with Chaos, right? Is there any chance that it's like, oh, here's how, here's how the Primarchs were actually born and Big E was working with Chaos and ooh. But I don't know how that's like, how that would save and or destroy the Imperium. I personally assumed that the uh, decree was... Because uh, Terminus, I mean, it, it, Terminus does not necessarily mean terminate, but that kind of is where my mind goes. I thought it was turning off the Golden Throne. Oh, so it's like a... Yeah. But well, how would that save the Imperium? Uh, maybe, well, it's save or destroy. One, what was the old uh, thing in Halo? When, when you found out what the Halos did, it was to starve the flood of their food source, so it killed all life. Um, and the, the idea was, it wasn't the idea like you store some life to repopulate on the halo rings. And then once everything is dead, you kind of come back slow, so oh. to speak. Like I, I assume that that might be part of the concept. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, once that golden throne turns off, the humanity just dies. Yeah. I was so say, I'm not there's, 100%. There's no, there's no saving humanity once the golden throne is off. Cause they're just screwed. There's just no chance. Right. Because they just get full on flooded by chaos. Yeah, with no like guiding light for ships, there's just no reinforcements can get anywhere. Warp travel becomes borderline impossible. It just becomes an absolute nightmare to get. Even like just one system over would be would take so long that any invasion, you know, the reinforcements would re would like arrive way after the invasion is actually finished. Um, Shai has said that the that uh, my guess is it's Emperor's If I Can't Have It, Nobody Can. I think it will shut down the Golden Throne and also cause other various self-destruct protocols all over the Imperium, causing the Imperium to be destroyed, also destroying the chaos ah. in the process, because chaos can't survive without humanity. That's and true. Stuff without, that we learned from recent books supports it. Yeah, without very easily corruptible humanity... Chaos is pretty much going to die out. I mean, they could probably survive a little bit off, like, I don't know, the Eldar and the Orcs. Uh, they probably get nothing out of the Necrons. Maybe a little bit from the Nids, but probably not as much as they get from humanity. So they would be significantly weakened or completely destroyed if humanity went out the window. So that's yeah. not a terrible guess, actually. And it has to be instructions as well. Like it, it's yeah. really, it's really strangely clear in you know considering how totally not clear it is. Where <laughs> it's an artifact, but it's just parchment in a wooden box. 
So well, it's well, either just instructions or potentially, I was going to say a spell, but you know what I mean, like a ritual, yeah, yeah. a warp-based uh-huh. ritual that could, which actually, thinking about it, if it was a warp-based ritual, that would be the best chapter to give it to. Because the Grey Knights yeah. are super hardened against that stuff. And it could be something that, I don't know, maybe does it cut off the the like, the like entirety of humanity, both Chaos and Imperium, from the warp? Which means no psychers, means no astropaths, but also mm. means that Chaos no longer has access to humans as a whole. But then again, I say that as soon as I've said it, if that was an option, wouldn't you already do that? Like, yeah. at this point, yeah. would you not already do that and just yeah. deal with super slow travel? It might be every world for itself, but you don't have that lingering threat of chaos anymore because there's nothing for chaos to feed off or, like, no way for chaos to just spread out, which is, humanity is great for that, so... Do we know who specifically wrote the Terminus Decree, or is that something that was just never explained and it's just it's just an old piece of parchment in a box? And nobody knows who wrote it. Was did Big E write it? Uh, did a Grey Knight write it? Who wrote this? The thing? the fact that it's it's a piece of parchment in a little wooden box makes you assume that it's very old. But at the same time, that also doesn't mean anything because the Imperium is just a backwards world. You know, even even the most powerful high loads of terror are still having scribes spill out pe- uh, thing giant rolls of parchment uh, when to record their meetings yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So. It's really difficult to to be fully uh, under, to fully understand it, um, but I'm assuming yeah. that maybe the writers wanted it to assume it as being very old and, or going with like that because gray knights are very old school knightly, yeah. you know. Maybe they kind of want that vibe. Yeah. I mean, they have books on their armor for God's sake. Yeah. So something that I've, I've I've I may have held this back a little bit just because I wanted to <laughs> see if we'd get to how old is it and who wrote it. Mm-hmm. It is locked away in the chamber that is said to hold the tomb of Malkador the Sigilite. Oh. So Malkador has like, a tomb? I thought he just appar- turned into dust. Apparently he has a tomb. He's a thousand On tomb? Titan. And that huh. he... he, uh, he he's, I mean, I say buried there. It might just be that they, you know... It might be like up. a memorial... <laughs> like, uh, just pan and brush into a, into a jar and then, you know, sent him over there. Crushed him into a jar, yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to read what Chai said or do you want me to sure why not I know Kiriath will probably mention stuff from the end and the death volume 1 but here's another thing about Emperor and death in one of the recent books Cypher one of the fallen breaks into prison on Terra and or, sorry breaks from prison on Terra and gets to Eternity Gate and he and his mates kill all the guards and he goes inside to kill the Emperor one of the custodians gets a telepathic message from the Emperor and asks Cypher to stop. Cypher says that he waited 10,000 years to kill the Emperor. What Ems can possibly say to him, oh, what can he possibly say to stop him? Custodes says, not yet. Cypher thinks for a bit, oh. nods, and leaves. Uh, insane. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All you so, gotta say is not yet. Okay. 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 Cypher is a bit of a wacky guy. You really yeah. can't tell what side he's on. You generally think he's chaos, and you run him as chaos in game. But he's kind of got this weirdo, like fallen. Well, he's one of the fallen, and then the lion's back, and the fallen is like putting the riz on for his risen dudes, the redeemed. And it's like, uh. okay. So also, I'm, I'm, I'm also. Yeah, he also saved Gilliman, and also. Uh, Cypher's uh, kind of a baller, but well, I don't Cypher think so. should be fairly on the Imperium side now that the Lion's back, right? And he's one of the Fallen, shouldn't he? Uh, uh, apparently not. Uh, okay, uh, okay. So he's still kind of just a he's just kind of a wild card. You don't really know what he's doing, where he's going, who he's with. He's just kind of doing his own thing. A little Obviously. shocked that he even got that far, though. A custodian, like Cypher, is kind of a baller, but a custodian would body him. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like, I mean, given that the custodians have like games where one of them will infiltrate the Palace of Terror and try and get as close as they can to the Emperor, and it, like it, they are, they're better than Space Marines. Like, there's no other way to put it. They're just better. They're they're way oh. better in every way. So you'd think that Cypher would get collared a little bit before he gets to the Emperor. But then again, 
it could just be one of those like the emperor knows everything. He can see the future. He knows what his fate is, like what's preordained and stuff. Mm. And so it wasn't his time to go. And Cypher might be... Cypher's such a weird one because really it just feels like he does what he wants. But at the same time, it's 40k. No one does whatever they want. That's not how the universe works. Yeah, there's always clearly, someone pulling the strings, right? Yeah, there's always someone pulling the strings. And for ages, I was like, well, Chaos is just messing with him. But at this point, I'm firmly in the camp of the Emperor is messing with Cypher. Also, and he's the one pulling the strings. Let's also not forget that a gigantic Tyranid kicked the head off a custodian so hard it hit the other wall and then he just fell over. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm so excited for the Norn Emissary model. I'm, I Those, don't know what it is. They're I'm so, so cool. excited. Oh, man. <laughs> Those are going to be wild minis. So, I, was already, I was just happy to get a Screamer Killer. Anything beyond that is just gone yeah. for me. <laughs> it's just I mean, that... I mean that new that new Death Leaper is like whoa. Yeah, it's I, I wasn't sure. Now it's it's a favorite. I love it. I love the cape. He's got like the drip is unreal on that model. Yeah. I, I do wonder well because a, a pretty common question that goes along with this is you, you roll back to the Eldar because uh when you go to it always starts with those stupid elves. Um when you go back to like <laughs> Bless, uh, you haven't changed. I, you know, I, I've been playing a lot of Disco Elysium and I had to listen. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I, re- I really want to shy. Back me up Hour on this long one. episode. Here we can go. I, can I? Bricky's talking about Disco Elysium. Is starting to look I'm just quick. saying. Settle I'm in, everyone. Just pack saying, a lunch. Shy, back me up on this one. <laughs> what if we got Measurehead to talk about type A and type B race theory, but in Warhammer? I'm just saying those Eldar, they're some type B. They are type B. Anywho. That, May as um, well be a, another language to me. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Warhammer is another language to everyone who's normal. Um, uh, that's fair. That's also true. <laughs> continuing, though, um, the whole thing with the Yanari is the idea of reincarnation through death. That's their whole shtick with the Yincarn and stuff. And, and it's oh. how they, they revived Gilliman, Gilliman, uh, Roboogie. Um, and getting Robuki back up by killing him and then bringing his soul back, so to speak, is kind of their attempt to not let Slanesh eat all the, all their souls. Yeah, yeah. And they did that with Gilliman. Yeah. You, you know, they they killed him and he came back. And so I, I do wonder if the not yet could be at all a sort of thing to that oh, like like it's kind of like the same thing with the yanari where they think they could maybe revive big e i mean having big e shenanigans having big e as an ally for the eldar would be pretty paramount and while the eldar are some some type b pieces of shit um they are certainly yeah. certainly not dumb I mean, Biggie reviving could literally both destroy and save the Imperium. Because if he came back, he would have to literally, like, scorched earth the Imperium from what it is right now and build it back up to what he thought it should be because they are not doing what he wants at all. Uh, So, I mean, that would kind of fit with the whole saving and destroying thing. Something that's, like, really interesting with the whole, like... uh the Emperor coming back, is there's this kind of assumption that I, I, I see fairly often in kind of like theory discussions about oh, what if the Emperor was revived. If he left the Golden Throne, would the Astronomicon still be as bright as it was? Or would it fade? Like, the throne is an amplification device. It was mm. built for that. Like, in the Horus Heresy, it specifically talks about the idea of Magnus being on the throne, which allows this beacon of light to continue which also means the Emperor can go and do other stuff. Yeah, whatever. If there's no one on that throne, does the light dim, which makes navigation borderline impossible? The Emperor might be able to go wherever he wants and do whatever he likes, but he's still only really kind of, physically at least, one person. So would it change that much? Like, he might be able to direct his will a bit better because he's not you know, a half-dead corpse He's not a on husk. the throne. He's not a husk of a man. But he can't really just get up and wander around, I don't think. Maybe so, that's like so- the caveat of the Terminus Decree is you got to find a psyker that can actually take his place, which, good luck. 
So yeah. side I, question, during the Great Crusade, the Golden Throne was not built yet, at least not until the, the ending area of it. Um, how were they doing interstellar travel? Was the Emperor just constantly throwing out like North Stars for his Primarchs? You know what? That's something that, as you were talking, I just went, did they ever address that? Like I don't I don't fully know whether that like beacon was active. I mean it must have been active in some sense because otherwise how do they navigate? Then again yeah. they've also like pushed out from earth and just gone well sorry they've pushed out from terra you can't you don't say earth it's not called to earth. If you push out from terra in <laughs> every welcome direction to welcome to earth you, you do you need navigation necessarily if you're just going out, just constantly pushing out and pushing the frontier and finding literally every alien race and absolutely destroying them. Okay, so the Astronomicon was originally constructed in the M30 in preparation for the Great Crusade. Yeah. But in that the, case, it wasn't then, using Big It wasn't e, using was Big it? E, yeah, right? Like, like, he, like he doesn't... Him? Why does he need to be amplifying it if it was already being perfectly fine? Like, his his entire Primarchs got scattered across the galaxy. It wasn't like they were only stuck in like Segmentum Solar. So it this is one of those things that if we're talk if we're being all meta, they did not account for in the writing. Um but like genuinely, I don't know. Okay. So Biggie in the days was of the powering Great Crusade, it remotely? Powering it dim- <laughs> powering it remotely. Well then oh why even God. bother with the Golden Throne at all? Well, I'm assuming that's so that he could have Magnus take over from him. Because oh, Magnus was the strongest son right, psychically. Right, right, right. So, so if then he Biggie has wouldn't Magnus, have to waste his power on it. He could yeah. Just, right, uh, oh right, my right, god. Right, so right, basically right. Big E was gallivanting around the universe, the galaxy, even, at like I'm assuming, like, not full strength. Yeah, he, he was having have to been, power he... it directly oh, the whole wow. time. So that was a an... all the Big E stuff we saw when he was moving around. He was nerfing himself. That that was oh, that he was, was alive. Was nerfed Big E. He was doing. He was basically doing Rock Lee with the weight training uh, things on. Even I get that. Even I get that reference. That's listen, man. That's that's Dragon Ball. Naruto stole that. It's the only anime reference I know. Yeah, well, yeah, but 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 Gara was like a cool character. So shut up. Gara was cool. Nah, was he though? I don't know. He was edgy, and, and oh, I was 14 boy. when Are I we watched talking it. talking about so. anime that's, now? That's fair. Oh, no, all right, let's, let's we get were, off this quick. We were in Briggy's wheelhouse before with Disco Elysium. <laughs> we're rolling quick. into my house now. Go, like, roll the wheel down the hill. <laughs> roll <laughs> it into, into a ditch. ditch. <laughs> <laughs> into a gutter, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. So, so yeah, uh, to be fair, also a life support device, and it does take, like, a 1,000 psychers, 10,000 psychers, one of the a other. Thousand. A day, I, yeah. A thousand. I, for some reason, I felt... This is one of those things where I must be misremembering, but I'm sure there was a point where it was like 10,000, but I think I've just inflated it. I think I've just gone like way off track and be like, it's even worse than it already was. Well, and it's, it's already 40K, bad you because you always a thousand assume the worst, people right? a day. Yeah. <laughs> I am positive it's a thousand because they do the thousand people in the Master of Mankind book. Um, yeah. Yeah. The first, uh, yeah, yeah. Which was, which was pretty horrifying. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, also, grim. like. Biggie's goddamn strength it, it fluctuates so heavily because you know sometimes he look he looks like he could just just take a planet and like eat it at the, with the power that he has <laughs> and then and then he pretty almost loses a fight to Drachnian in the webway. Yeah. He, and he like, actually did get whooped by Drachnian a little bit, didn't he? he yeah, and he had to shove him. it in he had to shove it into one of his custodians and tell him to get to get out of here. Get out of here, run. Comic run. 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 That's what it is. It's what syndrome? Comic book syndrome. The power oh, level yes. is exactly oh, yeah. what you need at the time of the scene, and everything else is disregarded. <laughs> anime is the same way. Like, showing yeah. anime is the yeah. exact same way. Yeah, so, that's very true. I have to admit, there are, there are other things, right, that I've kind of... As, as, I was, as we were looking into this, there, there's a couple of different theories. So... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm edit, doing this uh, to hold your to hold, hold to stop you for a second. This is my stop pipe. Okay. <laughs> Shy wants Shy wants us, us to read this real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has. I'm going to bring that up. That, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's one of the things I'm going to bring up. So oh, okay. there, there's there's two different things. One of them is what Shy mentioned, which I'll bring up in a second. But the other one is basically a uh, a fallback, a kind of fail safe, um, which is the Talisman of Seven Hammers. So this is something that the Terminus Decree could have referenced if the end and the death didn't give a fairly heavy hint towards stuff. So the Talisman of Seven Hammers is something that Vulcan created. Uh, spoiler alert. Makes sense. Just turn off now. If you if you haven't read about the Battle of Nocturne, then uh, skip ahead. I don't know. Um, so he created this device. He does not remember creating it. What? He was going through a bit of a perpetual thing. The whole oh, rebirth no. thing, having died. God, I hate perpetual stuff. And... <laughs> yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, and the Talisman of Seven Hammers is something that you could install into the Golden Throne. And if you activate it, it would create a massive, like, inferno that would consume all of terror. Oh. And... That's a very Vulcan kill- thing to do, sure. Oh, but- yeah. Jesus. Just, just wipe the planet clean. So if Horus were to take the throne or get close enough, or like it oh. seemed like Terra was going to fall, Last Vulcan had the capacity to just torch the planet and everything uh, okay. on it. So that's like a, a, a just a complete last resort. Everything has failed. Just burn it. Yeah, just burn the whole thing to the ground. Right. So that's that's something that for a little while, um, when, I was, when I was looking this stuff up, it was like quite a few people were like, oh, maybe the talisman, the seven hammers, maybe that's the whole thing. Oh yeah, also perma kills demons. It gives them true death. Whoa, okay. That's a big deal. Okay. This is yeah. this is the most Vulcan thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's the most <laughs> salamanders thing I've ever heard too. Uh, I guess it's one and the same. But yeah, it's kind of the same, yeah. Yeah, same thing, yeah. But there is uh there is something else that was just brought up in the end and the death. Um which by the way I don't know if you've tried to cram read the end and the death in like two days. It is possible, but you I've need to do it at least it. twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Siege of Terror book, uh, where that it's a whole thing. So, okay. I'm going to try and condense this down. <laughs> so, Malkador has to take the Emperor's place on the Golden Throne. Mm-hmm. The Emperor has vacated the throne to deal with Horus, um, so Malkador has to take his place. And Malkador is, you know, like the second most powerful site, second or third, depending on what you count Magnus yeah, as. Yeah, depending on I guess Magnus it's up for is, debate. Yeah. Um, he has to take the throne, and he sends off vast amounts of information via like psychic link. He just dumps info on his kind of chosen, the people that he trusts and the people that he believes will, you know, do the right thing. Okay. One of these is a guy called Hassan, and he is charged with kind of overseeing different plans and different fail-safes by Malkador, and one of the plans is called the Terminus Plan. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, this guy... There's no detail on what the Terminus Plan is. Oh, no. There's, there's, there's a bit of detail. There's... There's a bit. Of de- there's quite a bit of detail. So there is this terminus order that this guy gets, Hassan, and uh, and it relates to a guy called Basilio Fo, who is a geneticist, a really really gifted one. Hates like post humans. Not a fan. Absolutely despises it. <laughs> Considers the Primarchs to be like abominations and disgusting creations of the Emperor. Extremely like, based. Uh, yeah, he was, hates him. <laughs> Absolutely say, hates him. Doesn't sound <laughs> like a friend uh, to the Imperium. Does not sound like a buddy. Oh, oh no, 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 no. He's definitely, he's definitely not. He's definitely not because he is someone who fought against the Emperor during the unification of Terra. Basically, like an ancient enemy oh, of the okay. Emperor. <laughs> great, um, great, cool. Sounds like a swell guy. All right. Oh, he's, you know, tip top. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> 
Tip top, Befin- pip pip. Tip top. I don't, I've never used that phrase before in my life. I don't know why I said it now. Um, so Basilio is being like a really talented, creative geneticist, has uh, the ability to make a weapon, like a viral weapon, mm. that can destroy Astartes' gene templates. Oh, oh, that's, oh that's, that's pretty that's nasty. That's a big deal. That is a huge deal. He can do this? Yeah. So, why have they not killed him yet? (laughs) Well, if he's already created the template for this thing, it could create something that would absolutely destroy every single Astartes, both loyalist and chaos, in the galaxy. Aha! The plot thickens. And there's a custodian talking to Hassan, who, uh, who. He kind of says to the custodian, look, I know about this anti-Astartes weapon. I know about this kind of viral weapon. And it's deemed a terminus sanction, something that the Emperor wants to be kept held in reserve only for use in the most dire circumstances. Right. And that the deployment of it is only to be done by the Sigilite's chosen warriors. And only if the unthinkable happens. Huh. So if we take the information from I the mean, uh, from the end and the death, it's it's entirely plausible and possible that the Terminus Decree is a like an approved weapon from Malkador and the Emperor that would simultaneously wipe out all loyalist and chaos, chaos Astartes wins, in yeah. one go. I mean, because that would that it would, would rip fit. the foundation. Yeah, it that would, would rip save the foundations destroy... out from the Imperium. Yeah, but it would also remove every traitor Astartes Ooh. from the ones who turn during the Horus Heresy to the ones who turn after every single founding. Because apparently the Imperium can't cope with you know dealing with that. Uh, mm. <laughs> like it would just be the end of superhuman warriors on either side. Apart from, I'm assuming the custodies, because they're mm, not starters, yeah, yeah. They're so I'm different. assuming they'd be fine. But that would rip out the foundation of basically the entire 40k universe. No space marines, loyalist or traitor, all of them Ooh. dead. Well, considering that the sisters of battle and imperial guard are cooler anyway, I don't see this as too much of a loss. <laughs> I, I mean, it's fine. I it's mean- fine. They can do it. <laughs> they can, but if you got Push rid of all of the Imperium Space Marines, then wouldn't the uh, Eldar, Tyranids, Orcs, uh, Tau all have quite the upper hand on the Imperium without their I mean, Astartes? I mean, yes. Like, the Imperium would be really screwed. Just because you're right doesn't mean I'm not going to meme about it. <laughs> okay. Just because you're right doesn't mean you have to say it. <laughs> yeah. It's... I mean, as plans go, it's not without flaws, because you know there's there's unaugmented humans, and I keep complaining about the fact there's no traitor guard faction in 40k. Really, I know renegades and heretics are in legends, but shut up, they don't count. Um, like, there's wow, still really? a lot there's of no human element. Guard? No, no, not not. It's not like a, a tabletop faction, really. Huh? Wait, yeah, right, right. right? Uh, th- there, is- there are s- that you can run Trader Guards Min in your Chaos Space Marine list, but Trader Guard itself is not a army. Because in a oh. sense, you could really just build them as Chaos Guard and then just play them as re- like regular Guard for the most part. It's yeah. like not different enough. Uh, th- that being said, they probably should be diff- diff- different enough. Like Gene Stealers can take Guardsmen in their in their stuff, but only like five hundred points out of two thousand. Huh. I just kind of assumed that there were certainly traitor guard because, you know, they're just human soldiers. Of course they're going to get corrupted. Right. This is my argument, and it has been for, like, decades now, but we won't get into that because it'll just go on for hours. But, yeah, it's... it's, I feel like it's, it's one of those things where it is a decent plan if you have a part two. But then, as Shai has said, it can't be all that it is because killing all the Space Marines and Chaos Marines won't destroy humanity or chaos. It has to be part of a plan. Because, huh. like, on the one hand, yeah, you get rid of all the superhuman murder machines. Great. Awesome. 
but plenty of humans turn chaos and the yeah. Imperium has lives to spare by the billions, billions. literally. So it's it's not like an end to war. It's basically just taking the best weapon that either side has off Getting the table. Rid of it, yeah. And there is the fact of things like demons existing. So Chaos has got a massive amount oh, of demonic yeah. willpower and forces behind it. Like, you'd that, still have bloodthirsters and stuff, right? Yeah, you'd still have greater <laughs> demons. And boy, you'd and, be screwed if you had nothing to fight those bloodthirsters with. With no Marnius Calgar, how are you <laughs> oh, going to deal yeah. with them? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to cut Knights, their heads off very quickly? Yeah. The Grey Knights would also be included in that. Mm -hmm. They'd be wiped out as well, unless it was something so all-consuming that it dealt with all manner of like just warp-based stuff. But it doesn't. It doesn't actually suggest that. I would wonder if they would be a little different because of their um, Empery Gene Seed. Does it come from the Primarchs? Would they be oh, exempt kind of thing? Right. Maybe. Yeah, Maybe the Grey Knights of, wouldn't right. be affected by it. Yeah, because the Grey Knights be technically don't have a Primarch, right? They're just from no. pseudo-Emperor-ish gene seed. So they might not be affected by it. That that would be... I mean, uh, to, honestly, that would be really cool if that was the case. Because you'd be left with demons and the force that is dedicated to fighting demons. So that would kind of... Makes sense. Even out to an extent. Yeah. I, I say even out because there is that... I forget which Siege of Terror book it is, but there is a Siege of Terror book where the Grey Knights are fighting demons alongside Sisters of Silence, and they can't use their psychic powers. And oh. I, think it's a, I think it's a custodian who is fighting alongside. And the custodian is like, oh, well, without psychic powers, they're just better space marines holy shit like they're just <laughs> they're just better than normal space marines and that's without the thing that makes them really good against demons mm-hmm. that's amazing and i can't remember which book it is but like i don't know maybe that would maybe that would work like that the thing is no one would be able to breach terror from that point on if that's like ground zero and the whole like the core of the imperium is that one planet demons wouldn't be able to get close because they can't penetrate that far in without something assisting them. Chaos Space Marines don't exist, so they wouldn't be able to do a spearhead. Yeah. Loyalist Space Marines also don't exist, but Custodians are still there. Custodies yeah. aren't Astartes. They would still be present, I think. They're made in a tube. You see, you still have Custodians and Grey Knights, which I guess... Also, Shy says, also, DK, whatever the horrible plan is, just in case you don't hate Drago enough. Oh, no. Uh, Drago argues after Fall of Katie that it's time to use the Terminus Decree and press the History Eraser button. Jeez. Oh, my God. (laughs) All right, Drago. Okay. Chill out. Chill out, dude. Like, it's a bad situation, yes, but I don't think it's let's destroy everything bad. Oh, my God. If I had had a, 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 a nickel for every time... (laughs) <laughs> that the, the Imperium was in a Terminus Decree situation, I would have all the money that ever existed <laughs> because it exists in that state. It's permanently on the verge of collapse. Yeah, Every world they successfully cleanse of chaos, two more fall. That's the basis of the universe. Drago, <laughs> cut it out. Right? <laughs> Chill out, dude. Yeah, yeah but a- he's the he's the funny tangerine man. Drago is getting to ultramarine <laughs> levels of I hate you. I'm telling you, it's getting real close, buddy. You gotta cut this, cut that shit out. Drago acting like some of the Andros piece of shit. <laughs> oh, God. Do not, Don't bring his name <laughs> the, up here, D- the D- disgust. I'm so happy. Keep it. Keep <laughs> that ultramarine's name out your mouth. <laughs> Whack. He's not a real ultramarine. He's a he's a pretender. He's <laughs> ultramarines aren't real. They can't hurt you. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I don't care how funny the man is when he's closing into me with a knife while talking about his beard made of tiny <laughs> men. Well, TTS reference. I I I know that's a TTS reference. Let's oh, go. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> 
it took uh, me a second to place that. I was like, is everything okay? Mm-hmm, <laughs> Are we all right mm-hmm, here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, too, uh, have a beard. Beautiful of and me. men. To be honest, in a way, I'm... It, it's kind of cool that there's a direct reference in the end and the death. Or at least what feels like a direct reference. They yeah. could always say, lol, that's not true. It's the same thing with the uh, the Easter egg for the Blood Ravens that was put in the Horus Heresy books, where so where the psyker directly says a raven made of blood, and then the Black Library director went, "Nah, Blood Ravens, <laughs> nothing to do with Thousand Suns. Ignore that." Ignore which, it, by yeah. the way, bullshit. Um, <laughs> like, I kind of like the Direct Ravens, but at the same time. It being a constant mystery where it's something so universe altering, so like pivotal to the existence of 40k with no further expansion. I kind it's one of those things where it's like, oh, can you expand a little bit? And then you go, no, not like nah. that. <laughs> nah. Not like that. I kind of preferred it when we just had no clue what you were talking about. Yeah. It, it's so much more. You can come up with your own insane theories that are way beyond that. <laughs> like, <laughs> for me, when I first read about the Terminus Decree, admittedly, it wasn't until 7th edition Codex, um, where I read it and just went, this is mad. What could this <laughs> even be? Is this like a warp bomb? Like, do the Grey Knights all cluster together? <laughs> and then focus all the psychic energy, and then explode the Eye of Terror? Is that what it is? What else could it be? Could it, like, do they just go around slaughtering? Is it like a step-by-step, planet-by-planet annihilation of everything until chaos starves to death? Is that it? And now, with the end and the death, there is that kind of, I guess it's like a kind of viral thing that gets rid of space marines, Maybe? but even then, that doesn't fix the conflict. Yeah, it that's a, like we said, that could maybe only it. be one part of it is getting rid of space marines, but there's got to be more steps. Like, step one, get rid of all space marines. Step two, blow everything up or something. Like, yeah, that has to be just one part of the plan, right? There has to be a step two, because yeah. by itself, it doesn't fix, fix the, anything. Yeah, it doesn't fix the conflict between Chaos and the Imperium. Yeah. It would have to be a multi-step process, like... Does everyone go into the webway? Do they mm. en- eliminate all Astartes, just kill all of them, and then find a way to do what the Emperor first envisioned, which was essentially unlock psychic potential and inhabit the webway away from chaos? Man, my homie Arkin Land was not having a good time in that webway. I don't know if... <laughs> He was he was not <laughs> he was feeling not it. Feeling he was it at all new. He, new, new, he new, was new. he was on that perk thirty, and he was having a bad time. <laughs> so how him many... and Johnny Laz we were having a, an absolute <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> you, you know, memes aside, that the talking about him in Master Mankind, I like the fact that he hated the fact it was called the Land Raiders. Like, well, that's yeah, so he hated stupid. That shit. Yeah, I, I do like that. There's a little meta, a little mm-hmm. additional meta bit. I so, love that. It was, it was like the writer basically going, look, we all know this is silly, right? Stupid, we yeah. get it. We we understand. And the guy that it's based off, he doesn't like it either, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't complain to me. It's not my fault. It's what they wanted, and he hates it too. So it's all good. <laughs> so aside from the person that wrote the Terminus Decree, we don't know who wrote it, how many people actually know what the Terminus Decree is. Like, they just know that it exists, but, like, does anybody know what the damn thing actually says? No. Nobody. It's never been opened. I, You know, I feel like from purely... I don't know if it's logistics, but I feel like they should open it and at least read it and at least know what <laughs> well, the plan is so that they can be know. like, hey, we, I know what the plan is. I know when to actually use this thing. Someone does know, though. Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah, Big E and whoever wrote it. No, no. A man with tiny men in his beard also knows. Oh, God, of course. He is. Yeah. <laughs> the Supreme Grand Master of the Grey Knights right, is also right, pervy right. to the, uh, okay. uh, you know? Yeah, but what? He's, an, he's an idiot. I can't trust him. He's a I mean, dork. 
I mean, okay, he's a he's dork, a, yes. He's a big, ugly dork. <laughs> oh, she used the word dork a, there. A, a dork, yes. Uh, an idiot? Uh, no. Eh, he's probably not <laughs> an idiot. But he's a big, stupid dork, and I hate him. That's fine. This, Being a dork this, is, this is a flawless. He's a big doo head. <laughs> this is a flawless end, and I will deliver it <laughs> as it's been written. And if I didn't point out that it was written, then you'd think it was great. But I've drawn attention to it now, so it's going to make it worse than it otherwise would have been. We don't know... And we probably will never know until Games Workshop pulls 40k end times, which will happen, or will it? End the episode. Don't actually end the episode. Yeah, we have more to talk about. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. no, I, we could go on I for hours. To talk about. I don't know. If yeah, there's there's loads. I don't, I don't think we should end the episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now end it. I'm done. I've got it. On. My first I'm fuck you from I'm shout. I'm going to drop F-bombs all through this ending just because I think sound. <laughs>